All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another Monday meeting. Um, today, we have CSUN's internal audit department, and they're going to be talking about internal audit versus external audit. Um, but before we get started, we just want to give you the quick reminders, as we always do. On Wednesday, we have a meeting with Anderson from 12 to 1 p.m., so please join us for that one. And uh, go ahead, Isaac. Right. And then we have on Sunday, we have our tax simulation, which for those who already uh, signed up, it's going to be on Sunday from 3 to 5.30 p.m. as well. And the same day, we have our escape room from 7 to 9 p.m., which you need an RSVP, which was sent by uh, AA exclusive event. So, yeah. And uh, lastly, before we get started, we just want to let you know we're going to be posting a file into the chat that you can take a look for extra information on internal audit. And uh, also, please, if, if you're willing and able, turn on your camera so our presenters can see your faces. And we'll get started with the meeting. I'm going to pass it over to Howard. Thank you very much. Uh, if you can't hear me, please let me know if the audio is not good uh, as we go along. So Isaac, if you could start the uh, PowerPoint. Great, and in uh, slideshow mode, perfect. All right, well, so we wanna talk about uh, what the difference is between internal audit and external audit. And uh, that's me, I'm, we'll talk about a little bit about the uh, initials behind my name. And that's fine, the next slide is okay. So I've been uh, asked to present to your group uh, several times over the years. And here's what we're gonna talk about today. A little bit about me, uh, my biography, some background on what internal audit is, and to understand better what the difference is between internal audit and external audit, we're gonna talk a little bit about risk and internal controls. And then we'll talk about the certified internal auditor exam, which as students, you're all eligible to take. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to graduate. We'll talk more about that and also talk to you about an internal audit internship I've had over the years. And finally, we'll end with uh, questions and answers. Okay, next slide. Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm uh, a graduate of CSUN uh, several years ago, as you might imagine. So I've been working for CSUN for the past 20 years. Prior to that, I was with a company you might've heard of, PwC. And I worked uh, for some large financial institutions and I did some instructing at uh, UCLA. So my certifications, uh, one is in internal audit, a certified internal auditor, CIA. And the other one, I'm a certified fraud examiner. Okay, next slide. So let's talk about what internal auditors do. And I, I see there's some uh, questions in chat, but I'll, I'll, we'll get to those as we get towards the end of the presentation. So a lot of times probably you've heard the word auditor and you think that probably relates to finances. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions about internal audit. We don't necessarily focus on accounting and finances. Many times, um, things I end up investigating or auditing don't have anything to do with finances. One example we'll talk about more later is grades. A big part of the university, what grades you get in all your classes. And there are risks and internal controls involved with that. And that's something that can be audited as well. So as internal auditors, we look at every part of an organization. We look at processes and procedures. We wanna make sure that information is accurate. And after we do our review, we make recommendations to either improve things or to establish internal controls. And then a big part of the internal audit work is following up to make sure that the corrective actions are implemented. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's uh, somewhat misunderstood. Most people think it has to do with finances, but not always. But in, it's one of the top five highest professions in demand around the world. And several years ago, it became a requirement that all listed companies 
must have an internal audit function. So that came about as a result of Sarbanes-Oxley. You might've heard that in some of your classes. So by listed, meaning any company that's listed on the stock exchange must have an internal audit function. So the key word there is function. So they don't necessarily have to have in their own department. They can hire out by going to, for example, some of the big accounting firms and they do their internal audit work on an outsourced basis. So the good news is that uh, there are a lot of openings throughout um, the corporate world and also in government for organizations that hire internal auditors. So we get to do a lot of interesting things. And companies, and especially these days, are offering more flexible schedules to entice uh, employees. So auditing auditors can work in public, private, and government. The last uh, bullet there, as a deliberate, I put six dollar signs because you can make a six figure income working in internal audit. Don't know about seven figure income. Maybe someone who works for uh, Apple or Google or someplace might like that, might make that much. But you can make a six figure income in internal audit. Okay. Next slide. So talking about what exactly internal audit is, most of your coursework, you're not really learning much about internal audit. You're learning about financial statement audit or financial auditing. But here's the sort of an academic definition of internal audit. Uh, some universities do actually have classes in internal audit. We're not one of them yet, so maybe someday. But it's the academic definition uh, that's uh, helpful to understand is an independent objective assurance and consulting activity. There's a lot of a lot of words in that definition to have a lot of meaning. But the point is that it adds value and improves an organization's operations, not just there to find people doing something wrong or write tickets or whatever. And it helps an organization uh, by to accomplish its objectives. So Auditors bring a, an approach to looking at things that it's sort of a systematic way. We talk to people, we ask questions, we look at documents and then evaluate an entity. Okay, next slide. So here's some examples of what internal auditors work on. In a typical company, um, either retail or manufacturing, some of the things we might look at would be purchasing, cash handling, cash controls, manufacturing, payroll, collections, marketing. So notice not all those things relate to finances, right? So that's the kind of emphasizing the point that internal audit is not always about money and finances. At a university environment, when we're do doing uh, audit work, there's a number of areas that we can look at. Admissions, right, getting into the university, there's a process, there's internal controls, all those things can be audited. Grade reporting, housing, dorms. So we've had reviews there where people were still in the dorm, even though they weren't taking classes anymore. So that was, became an audit finding. Fundraising, construction, and athletics. Okay, next slide. So as I mentioned, it's helpful to understand risk and internal controls before we talk about the differences between internal audit and external audit. So the definition of risk that um, is helpful in short is any issue that could prevent an organization from achieving its objectives. To manage risks, we use what are called internal controls. And if you haven't heard the term before, you probably come in contact with internal controls through your either your work any, or some of your classes. Okay, next. So what are internal controls? So I imagine some of you are either working or have worked either in, in accounting positions or retail, fast food, whatever it might be. So those policies and procedures that your company has, those are typically, those are internal controls. And we'll see some more specifics as we as we go on. So with all those policies and procedures, it might be a little book, it might be a booklet, it might be something they email you and say you have to read this. So maybe by a show of hands, I could see 
um, has anybody been exposed to internal controls in their in their work? Okay. All right. So next, next slide. Okay. So why are internal controls important? Well, they help prevent errors, and they provide for things that we can account for everything that. We have effective and efficient operations. Management reporting is reliable. And a big part of internal controls is compliance with laws and regulations. A lot of regulations in a state university, and we have to be in compliance with all of them. One big um, asset, you might not think of it as an asset, but reputation is a big uh, thing that needs to be protected. If you, for example, um, you might have heard some of these issues around uh, uh, ad admissions not too long ago in the newspaper or TV about some people who paid a lot of money or went around the system to get their children into very prestigious universities. So that sort of was an, had an impact on the reputation of those universities. Next. Okay, so we'll talk about a little more about internal controls. So. One of your former classmates said, uh, that's kind of technical. What does it mean in layman's terms? Next. Okay, so simplified internal controls are those mechanisms that are in place to either prevent errors from entering the process or detecting errors once they've occurred. Or an easy definition is what we have in place to make sure things don't get goofed up. All right, well, think about your own internal control systems. I bet you didn't think you had some. But, you know, I used to give this presentation typically in person, so, but you can probably uh, put yourself in that position. When you came to campus or when you came to your computer this morning um, or wherever you went, did you lock your doors? What about your ATM card? Do you keep the pin confidential? What about your uh, checking account? Do you have a checking account? Do you reconcile it every month? I imagine most of you might have a credit card. Do you look at your credit card statements and compare it to the receipts? These are all, all these things are your own internal controls. And many of us have them. We might not use that word, but that's what they are. All right, next. Okay, so to help better understand the, the concept of internal controls, we're gonna talk about uh, our objective, our risk and our internal controls to get a handle on what we, talk, what we mean when we talk about internal controls. So let's go back to that slide, all right. So our objective is getting to campus. So, and parenthetically pre-pandemic, all right. So imagine you're trying to get to campus. So what are the risks? Let's go to the next slide. And when I do this presentation in person, people call out what the, the risks are. And um, so let's uh, not do that <laughs> this, this time. So let's take a look at the next slide and can see some of the risks people have come up with over the years when I've made this presentation. So I click again. So traffic is a risk, right? So that would prevent you from getting to school on time or getting to school at all. So keep, keep clicking through the risks. Uh, I see. Parking, speeding ticket. Okay, so you get the point. So there's a few more. Right, so, so let's stop there. So all of these things could prevent us from reaching our objective. So these are the various risks that we could have uh, associated with getting to school. All right, going to the next slide, let's think about what the internal controls are. Right, but you could probably imagine some of them. So some of the internal controls be listening to traffic reports, using an alarm clock, right? All these things to, to help us avoid the risk of getting to school late. Right. So these things are internal controls. You might not think of them with that terminology. But they're all things that we do 
to help reduce risk. Okay, let's take a look at something, something that we might audit if we go to the next slide. Um, like I mentioned, some of you may have been exposed to internal controls in your new employee training and orientation. You might've gotten um, some exposure to those things like balancing the cash register, written policies, um, so someone else counts the cash, dual custody of cash, things like that. So all those are internal control uh, processes that you probably, many of you may have done in your, uh, in your work. All right. Okay, so let's think about a, a case study uh, that actually happened at a, a university where several students reported that the final grades they expected were not what they received. So how could this happen? Right, so the, let's we'll just stay on the slide for a few minutes, thanks. So how could this happen? So a professor, uh, submits the grades electronically, and how could that be um, interrupted? What, what risk could have impacted that process? So as it happens, um, there were some students who were taking this class and they had a professor who happened to be extremely outgoing and friendly and very talkative about her own personal life. And so she told the students um, where she went to school, where she went to high school, where she lived, what her pet's name was. Maybe you might be um, catching on what, how they managed to perpetrate their, their fraud. So the students were listening to the professor and uh, all the personal things she talked about. And so they wanted to, they weren't happy with their grades. I think they were getting D's or F's, and there were two students working on this uh, issue. And they tried to uh, use the professor's ID and password. So typically your ID is your first initial, last name, or first and last name, and then the name of the university.edu. They entered a password, and of course they didn't know it. And they got a message saying, did you forget your password? And so the next step was, well, here are your security questions. And the security question was, what high school did you go to? And they knew what the high school was, and then they changed the professor's um, password. And then the next step, of course, they changed their own grades. So, so we had some internal controls that were not present. The internal control that you, you might see if you've changed your password on some system, you usually get a confirmation that you and to say, did you change your password? Your password has been changed or something like that. So that process wasn't in place at this university. And that was how the students were able to perpetrate the fraud for a while. So after a while, it turns out these students were, didn't just change their own grades, but unfortunately they changed the grades of some other people. And these other students complained. And that's how it all unraveled. So another example that internal auditing doesn't necessarily relate to finances. So eventually these students were suspended and uh, they no longer attended the university. Okay, next slide. Okay, so given that a little bit of background about risk and internal controls, I wanted to give you a, a little overview of what the differences are between internal audit and external audit. So internal audit, there's more of a broad focus. We're looking at accurate financials. So there is financial activity we might look at. Uh, things that we talked about with regard to the purpose of internal audit. And there's a diverse skill set required. And we're part of the organization. We're not external. We're not apart from the organization. We work for the organization generally speaking. So with external audit, there's more of a specific focus. It's an accurate financial statement, is a big concern as part of the main purpose of the audit. And we're looking at historical data when you're doing an external audit, the compliance with accounting and other regulations, 
and internal controls over financial reporting. Whereas if it's internal audit, we look at internal controls over the entire organization. The skills are primarily accounting and the auditor, external auditors independent from the organization. Okay, next slide. So a little bit more about the differences, about the focus, standards, broad, dealing with recommendations, and then follow-up. Next. Okay, so you, you can all look at this later. I'd be happy to share this uh, presentation with you. I can send it out. But basically we talk about internal audit, it's financial operational. So it's how things work in the entity, not just the finances. We consult, we talk about governance, IT and fraud. Whereas with external audit, it's primarily the accuracy of the financial statements and the adequacy of the internal controls over the financial statements. Okay, next. So the standards, uh, Internal Audit has an entity called the Institute of Internal Auditors, and they issue professional standards that apply worldwide. And external audit are governed by appropriate uh, accounting standards such as GAP. Okay, with regard to fraud, so fraud unfortunately happens in many organizations. With internal audit, we might investigate an allegation of fraud but we also make sure that preventive controls are in place so that fraud can be reduced from happening in the first place. With external audit, fraud isn't typically a focus. They might come across fraud in the course of an external audit, but investigating it would then be a separate engagement. Okay. So once an auditor is done, that they're not really done with their audit. The next part is communicating the recommendations for corrective action. External audit, they make recommendations. And go to the next slide. Or, yeah. So the next part of that is following up to ensure the corrective action is sufficient. With external audit, the follow up is less of a priority. It's usually left to for the organization to take care of those issues during the course of their normal operations. The external auditors don't necessarily ensure that the follow-up is done. So in summary, the internal auditors work for the company and provide guidance. The external audit is third party hired to provide an opinion on financial statements. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what's different. So we talked about the work um, in terms, of, what about the work-life balance? That's one of the things that's different with internal audit. Typically hours in internal audit are more predictable. You don't stay, you know, long, long weeks, overtime, weekends, things like that. You're an employee of the company. You serve units uh, within the entity. Generally speaking, there's an annual audit plan this year, things kind of changed uh, drastically all of a sudden. So the audit plan kind of had to be uh, readjusted for many companies, not just, not just my plan. And time reporting is more project-based rather than client-based. Uh, some of you may have had internships already with the accounting firm. You, you understand what I'm talking about. And typically, of course, we work at the company's sites. So with external audit, you've probably heard about the busy season. So long, long hours, a uh, good part, good aspect of external audit, you're independent of the company, but you do have these regulatory guidelines. So that's what uh, prompts the very long hours during busy season. The time reporting and eventually uh, the compensation to the firm is client-based. So uh, that's how that's done. And then you work at various clients' sites. When I worked for PwC, I was almost never in the actual PwC office. I was almost say 90% of the time at the client site. So next. So within internal audit, there's a number of uh, specialties. And these days, um, the more expertise and knowledge and skill you have in IT, that'll raise your profile for being hired for 
um, more lucrative assignments in the audit field. So there's a certification in IT audit. It's called the Certified Information Systems Auditor. And you can look that up. Another area of specialty that's very important is healthcare. Other specialties include banking, gaming, and hospitality. A lot of those auditors work in Las Vegas, and there's probably thousands of auditors working for the government. All right, so let's talk about the uh, designation or the certification that many auditors have who work in internal audit. It's called the CIA, it has nothing to do with the uh, spy agency, but you do need a bachelor's degree. Uh, you need a reference, a minimum of two years. You have to pass the exam, of course, maintain your knowledge and stay up to date. The interesting thing about the CIA exam compared to the CPA exam is you can sit for it while you're still a student. So you can pass the exam, then get your required experience, and then you become certified. Okay, next. And here's a little bit about one more uh, click. Show each part. Okay. So the exam has uh, three parts, and you can pass a part and keep it, and then for I think two years and while you're studying for the other parts, or you can be uh, very aggressive and take all three parts at once. Many people do that. So it's divided into auditing, um, managing auditing, and then the third part really has nothing to do with auditing. It's more about business, IT, financial management. It's not audit related per se, it's more about business knowledge. So a lot of the classes, non-accounting classes that you take, very useful for part three of the exam. Okay, next. Okay, so over the years, I've had uh, interns work for me right now uh, during our uh, shutdown phase. I don't have an intern, but I did have one up through March and uh, it just wasn't practical to have an intern at that time. But I may have an opening uh, either later this year or in the spring semester. So stay tuned for that. And let's talk about what the auditors, uh, the interns have done. They help me, they help uh, the audit function by working on various things, reports, um, obtaining supporting documentation, assist on investigations, review for compliance. And some of the interns have actually spoken to um, the accounting association over the years when we've made this presentation. And they've um, mentioned that the, one of the, some of the benefits of the internship to help them improve their writing and communication because a product of an audit is typically an audit report. And there might be a, a long report, a short report, but in any event, you have to communicate well, and it has to be well written. So that's one of the things that you can improve on during a, the internal audit internship. We use Excel, a Word, PowerPoint. The interns helped me with uh, this presentation and Outlook, of course. Flexible working hours, and of course, uh, very convenient because the job is essentially on campus. If we do have an opening for an intern uh, in the spring or summer, there may be some opportunity to do some of it uh, virtually, <laughs> although it's not ideal, but definitely, you know, if you're interested, even now you can contact me, but I, I can't uh, promise that I'll have an opening for sure. But um, based on the budget and number of things, um, don't know for sure right now, okay? But I, I hope to. It's, uh, it's been a very successful program. I've had 32 interns over the last 17 years, and I've kept in touch with quite a number of them. And they've uh, reported back to me that having the position and the work that we've done together helps them in their interviews with, um, with potential employers because they can talk specifically about internal controls, auditing, and that type of thing. So that's some of the, one of the other more intangible benefits. Okay, next slide. All right, so I'll be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Are, are you all there? <laughs> Now's the time to ask questions, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any. Feel free to even um, leave them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask a question. 
Um, here's the time, honestly, because I know a lot of people are recruiting right now and a lot of people are going through that process. And I know everyone has a lot of questions that haven't, they haven't gotten the chance to get it answered yet. So now's the time to get all of those answered and get an input from someone else who has experience in a lot of fields. Yeah, so I've interviewed a lot of people. So one of the things I've found helpful for people trying to get the new position is if they've had any prior position, it doesn't have to be in accounting. Any prior position is good experience. If you can talk about it, if you can talk about it intelligently and talk about it in terms of uh, business operations, that, you, that way you can impress your potential uh, employer. Okay, so, okay, the questions are going a little fast. So hold on, let me look at the chat section. Okay, how should students with no experience make the decision of going into internal external audit? What would you recommend on making this choice? Well, I would recommend going with external audit because there's more openings generally speaking. If it turns out that's not something you want to stay with, then you can look into the internal audit. But because there's generally speaking more openings, that'd be something to look at. But, um, you know, you have to look a little, the problem with internal audit is there are not a lot of entry level positions. So there's more openings and there's more entry level openings in the external audit world with all the uh, CPA firms. So that'd be my suggestion. Okay, next question from uh, Sarah. For auditing internships, what are the general requirements? Do we need to have completed certain classes? Uh, yeah, so for my particular internship that I offer, um, you should be in, in, into the accounting major, accepted into the accounting major. So you've completed all the lower division classes. So typically you'd be a, a, have a junior standing. Okay, so why did I choose to work in internal audit rather than external audit? Well, it turns out I kind of fell into it. I had a part-time job while I was working at a bank or a financial, large financial institution. And they, I had a position that was audit-like, so it was somewhat auditing with a particular process I was reviewing of a verification nature. And when I graduated, um, they said, said uh, would you like to come work in our internal audit department? So that, that worked out for me. All right, a anyone else? I have a quick question. Yeah. <clears throat> Is the assessment of risk the same for an external and internal auditing? Uh, very good question. The risk, in the external audit is typically the looking at the risk affecting the financial statements, okay? So it's not the whole entity they're looking at from a risk standpoint, it's the financial statement risk, not the finances per se, but it's the financial statement. One way to think of it is think of what, what about accounts receivable as a topic, okay? So what would be the difference between external audit and internal audit when they're looking at accounts receivable. So the external auditor's objective with accounts receivable is what? It has to be accurately reflected, right? But an internal auditor's issue with accounts receivable is, are we gonna actually collect all that money? And do we have a process in place to ensure that will happen? Okay, sometimes you have to write things off and that's an, an external audit you know, task as well. Did you do the write-off? But internal audits focus would be more on you know, the entity continuing and having procedures, internal controls to ensure there's collection and processes in place. So, so that, that's a good example I think people can uh, relate to. So, so it's more about the re reflection of how the NC will take care of the AR rather than how it'll disclose it to its shareholders like external audit and how it's like. Right. Okay. Yeah, cool. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Okay, we have another question come in. What kind of safeguards do companies implement to ensure the independence of internal auditors from the firm? 
typically um, internal auditors report to a board to the board of directors or in a nonprofit might be a board of trustees. So that's how the independence is um, in place. So there's an independent reporting line. So outside of the typical uh, management of the company. So in, in also not just that reporting line, it's also an independent attitude that internal auditors are required to have as part of their certification. But that's the, uh, the formal way by reporting to uh, a board rather than to say a manager or a CFO. So another, another good question, thank you. I have a good question for you in regards to your internship and people that have completed the internships. Um, you did say that you keep in contact with a lot of them. Um, yes. From your point of view, what would you say is one of, from the experience that they get, what would you say is one of the most helpful things that they've taken away from the internship? I think the one of the biggest things is they get an understanding of internal controls in a real working environment, rather just a theoretical viewpoint. So we see it, you know, working on a, on a campus, you know, as a student, you don't really think about the business side of a school, right? I didn't, and you probably don't, but, you know, there's food service, there's all these people getting paid, there's a police department, there's healthcare, there's admissions, there's, you know, all these things, and they all have internal control structures around them to make sure they're happening and being done correctly. So that's what the students, I think they get one of the biggest things is an awareness of the importance of internal controls and what they are. Maybe secondarily, they get um, more experience with writing, business writing, and also using Excel and using PowerPoint. All right, we have another question from uh, Mary. Um, how will the internship look like given the virtual setting? Well, I think we're going to have to learn about that. I can't uh, say that for sure, because obviously it's the first time I will have ever had a virtual internship, but I think there might be some opportunity to have it uh, a hybrid type uh, structure, depending on what types of things we're auditing in the, in the future. But another good question, I, I appreciate that. I don't have a question, but I would like to actually, Mr. Lubok, thank you. Oh, I had my internship with you. <laughs> and um, I also want to add a few things that I experienced uh, while I was interning for you. Uh, one of the things that was amazing about you was how accurate you were. <laughs> you were always was, like able to catch things that I wasn't even like looking at. And that actually helped me a lot to learn uh, to be more careful with everything. Also, um, I love that how you, every time like I came in, you would like uh, introduce uh, new sources that I could learn more about audit. Also how to be updated on the news about like fraud or everything like that, uh, which was actually very amazing to this day. I still do some research on that. I go check out the news to see what's going on in the world. Um, I just wanna thank you for all of that. Well, thank you, Mary. I appreciate uh, it's a nice, nice surprise to see you on the on the meeting. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. So how do you think a virtual uh, internship would work? Um, to be honest with you, the last part that we were like trying to get certain things done, it's a little bit confusing. It would be a little bit hard because it's not um, a direct contact with you. But yeah. I think it's possible since like a lot of things will be through uh, Excel or Google or like doc can be used for certain like uh, documentations and uh, maybe you can send out like um, the samples and the students can also like work on the reports at home and send it back to you you can review it, it it's possible it's possible but it would be a little bit hard because I think I love the direct contact with you okay. so so it definitely would be a challenge, assuming that we're able to have it in the spring or summer, but hopefully we'll be able to ignore things uh, open uh, and it won't be such a struggle to do things uh, in person. So Gohar had another question about what, how did I choose accounting and how did I choose audit? Well, I chose accounting. Uh, if you paid attention to my um, biography, you might've noticed that I have a minor in music. So I started as a music 
major. So I realized as while I was doing that, I might not be able to make a living being a musician, okay? So I realized um, maybe I should think about something else. And being a fairly smart guy, I thought maybe I could try accounting, see how that works. So I took uh, accounting class, managed to pass, and went ahead and got the degree and the rest is history. So as far as choosing audit and internal audit specifically, one of the things I liked in some of my coursework was those like term papers that you write, that you research something, you investigate. So an internal audit is something almost like that, where you have to learn about something, you learn about what could be better, or what could be improved, then you write it up, and then you present it to the people that you're auditing. So if you like that kind of research and analysis, that would be a field to consider. Okay, we have another question from, I'm sorry, I won't try to pronounce your name. So uh, does the importance of internal audit vary across different industries? If yes, what are the industries that are more vulnerable? Well, that's a really interesting question. I don't know if I can really give a real intelligent answer, but any entity that um, has lots of operations going on, they need to have an internal audit function. So the higher education field had a lot of fraud perpetrated against it, but the problem with the, the fraud you might've heard about with the university admission scandal, so there was collusion. So internal controls are great, but if people collude, if they cooperate with each other, if the admissions person and the athletics person are in collusion, then internal controls can be overridden. So that's where it's, where it's hard. So as far as other industries that are more vulnerable, the areas of types of industries that have more fraud are ones that have a lot of stuff readily available. And the biggest example would be cash, right? So the banking industry, retail, those types of industries are more vulner vulnerable from fraud and their internal audit and their fraud prevention has to be very important. I really appreciate all these uh, excellent questions. So you're really thinking these things through, appreciate it. All right, well, if, if that's all, I uh, wanna thank you again for allowing me to speak to your group. That's uh, probably been uh, about 10 times or so over the years where I've had that opportunity. And I usually like to bring in one of my interns and sure enough, uh, Miriam uh, was in on the meeting as well today. Thank you.